I've never really gotten into uh, watching reality television. I remember uh, the granddaddy of them all, the reality TV show called Survivor, which actually was premiered 20 years ago, uh, which is hard for me to imagine, that I remember being confused about why people would want to be on that show. Uh, I remember being baffled that they would uh, literally uh, bear themselves uh, physically and metaphorically, you know, the idea being uh, present this uh, part of themselves in which they are conniving and forming alliances. And I remember just being blown away that people would actually volunteer to be on that television show, and I couldn't quite comprehend why that would be. And over the years, I've, I've only seen it kind of as our culture of celebrity has grown, and uh, I try to imagine why you'd want to be a Kardashian or uh, these uh, reality dating shows, why people would want to be on those. Uh, I think the most recent one, uh, The Bachelorette, my daughter loved to watch it, and I saw a few episodes, and I thought, my God, why would those people do that to themselves? Go on that show and make fools of themselves. And, and I just was blown away and am continually blown away by that, that concept that they would bear themselves before millions of people. Why? There was a a survey, uh, Pew Research did a survey in, I think it was 2007. They were interviewing um, 18 to 25 year olds and they were asking them not what their goal in their life was, but what they thought other people in their generation, what their goals in life would be. Uh, what, what did they think was a, a generational goal that people would identify? And the response was, number one, getting rich. I can relate to that. Number two, over half said, getting famous. So their goal in life was not a certain accomplishment, or, or what they perceived as the goal in the generation was not a particular accomplishment or a particular learning. The goal was to become famous. And over the past 20 years, that seems to be the thing, right? We want to be, or many of us want to be famous. And I always wondered, why has that become so important? And I, as I've reflected on that and thought about that, I think I've come to a realization. And the realization is, that people want to be known. People have studied uh, mass shootings ever since Columbine uh, and identified various sources of why uh, those events, those horrific events occurred. And uh, psychologists and sociologists who point to easy access to guns or uh, might point to the challenge of mental illness in our society. They also talk about bullying in schools, all those important things to discuss. But they've be begun to study a particular phenomenon that kind of carries over in various parts of the mass shootings. And that dynamic is that what drove a lot of the shooters at Columbine and other mass shootings is what? They wanted to be famous. And I think we live in such a world that's so disjointed, families struggling to be connected, communities, the loss of community, the sense of, of, of no connections, that there are very few people in very few places where you are known. I think that's the Appeal, place where everybody knows your name, 
right? And there are so, and what's so sad is that that's true of so many of us in our culture, that we really don't have those communities and places that we are fully known. And its impact is profound. The passage uh, we read um, this morning, 1 Corinthians 13, most of you probably know it by heart because you've heard it read all the time uh, at, uh, at, uh, at, at weddings. It's a beautiful passage. Describing love is patient and kind. But the, one, the line I want to show, it's towards the last, uh, Kim, that I, wanna, I want, it's kind of very subtle and out of the blue. Um, one more. Another one. Uh, one more. I think it's the very last one. Now I know only in part. Paul is talking about the power of love. And, 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 and how love, uh, in many ways, when he describes love, he's talking about God. God is kind and patient. And there's this line, now I know only in part. Now I know. I'm, I'm still, we live in a, in a world in which I know only, it can only catch glimpses. There will be a day when I fully understand, I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. It's just one line in there. And it's the heart of this passage. Even as I have been fully known. That the source of love, the source of kindness and patience. Is this truth that when we experience grace. We are fully known. One of the most famous sermons of the 20th century was by uh, a theologian, a famous theologian named uh, Paul Tillich. And he, it's a passage uh, from that in which he talked about grace. Grace strikes us when we are in great pain and restlessness. It strikes us when we walk through the dark valley of a meaningless and empty life. It strikes us when we feel that our separation is deeper than usual because we have violated another life, a life which we loved or from which we were estranged. It strikes us when our disgust for our own being, our indifference, our weakness, our hostility, our lack of direction and composure has become intolerable to us. It strikes us. When year after year the longed-for perfection of life does not appear when the old compulsions reign within us as they have for decades, when despair destroys all joy and courage. Sometimes, at that moment, a wave of, life break, wave of light breaks into our darkness, and it is as though a voice were saying, you are accepted. You are accepted. Accepted by that which is greater than you in the name of which you do not know. We are so fully known in the midst of our own brokenness, in the midst of our own fumbling, and the truth of grace is that we are accepted. Now, I often, in weddings, uh, because we use this passage, I'll use it as often in weddings and talk about what I think that pa this passage means. And uh, I'll share with a couple, usually in front of the, the congregation, I'll share, uh, right now you are in love, which is a great thing. It's a form of psychosis, but it's a great thing, being in love. It's an amazing feeling, and that should be celebrated and enjoyed. But I promise them there will come a day when they wake up in the morning and they look over at that person laying next to them and they're snoring uh, or they'll notice that person's uh, dirty clothes strewn over the floor or they forgot to put the cap on, the toothpaste or 
whatever, there will be a day in which they look over at that person and they will ask themselves, why <laughs> did I marry this person? It's true. But I often say that's when you know you love them, right? That's when you know you love your partner is when you fully know and accept who they are. That's what the church is supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be the place of grace where everyone's welcomed and you are accepted, right? There is power in being a church of grace that welcomes all kinds of people, different kinds of people who can be themselves and be accepted because God accepts them. There is amazing power in that kind of community. And we are called to be that kind of home. To God be the glory this day and forevermore. Amen.